another Ants on a Rock video. Welcome to the Ant Corner. And here we go with episode 2 of my massive multi-species vivarium. In this episode I will show you some of the changes already taken place in the tank and some of the new inhabitants giving you an update on our awesome colony of Polyracus dives. I'll post timestamps in the description below for all these different sections. So sit back as we take our first step into our journey of discovery. There's been plenty of changes already to this massive tank and plenty more needed to be honest. The pond has had to be dug out and rebuilt three times. The water just wasn't holding its level, it was leaking through to the drainage layer too much and I was having to top it up to a point where it was soaking into the substrate therefore it could cause all my plants to die with root rot. I solved this issue by basically turning my pump on its front so it's drawing from a very very little amount of water. What you can see here is where it pulls. It comes out of our fountain against the log and pulls into a deeper section behind where eventually it drains between the two rocks into the pump area. This is still a slight issue with substrate escaping down behind so we are looking at adding some form of mesh net around the pump or some kind of protective screen and then we will disguise this with rocks or logs or something else. I'll update about this in a later episode when I've confirmed what I'm going to do and actually get on with it. Anyways, moving on. I decided to add in my second colony of ants. These are Marana Plus Bicolor, also known on my channel as the Valentines. This is quite a mature colony of around about 100 workers. Now, most people wouldn't add two ant species together and I wouldn't really recommend it. Having done lots of research and quite a few experiments mixing workers together and seeing how things react, I can honestly tell you that Marana Plus Bicolor have some amazing defensive capabilities. When the nest is attacked, they form sort of a flower petal shape with their gasters, grouping together inside the tunnel entrance. Their gasters obviously having a stinger tip is forming quite a nasty defense against any invader. They also play dead, which is pretty cool, and I've got some footage of that to show you later. Adding the colony was actually a really easy process. It didn't take long at all and they were exploring around and going straight into the tunnel that I had already created. I used the substrate that was in their outworld that I had been keeping them in and there was already a couple of ants mixing in there too. It really didn't take long and they all moved out. Now, although, like I said, it did go well for a few days, but I noticed my polyracus dives being much larger and very aggressive, were kind of bullying the Marana Plus bicolor. Now, the bicolor live differently to the weaver ants, of course, weaver ants being arboreal prefer to live above ground, whereas these will dig tunnels until they drop dead. They had tunnels absolutely everywhere. After a few days they were popping up around the tank, near the nest sites, near the food sites, just everywhere. And it was a really good way for them to get about, but they were drawing a lot of attention from our polyracus dives. Them being so aggressive, they wouldn't leave them alone. And although the bicolor do have these defensive probabilities that I've told you about and will show you now, 
it didn't look good. So here's one of our polyracus dives. Excuse the awful camera work, I had to jump on it whilst I could see it. As you saw, he did attack our Miranda Plus. Our Miranda Plus instantly curled up, playing dead, and the polyracus dives lost interest, which works really well. I think they do it with their gaster pointed up, and quite honestly, the pain isn't worth the meal. Now here comes the second bicolor, and the first one walks off completely fine. So, as I said before, our dives are very aggressive, and although I can feed them lots of live wax worms and lots of chopped up Mario worms and lots of other critters already, they just wouldn't leave the bicolor alone. So, two o'clock in the morning came one night, and I couldn't sleep. I didn't want our bicolor getting bullied, so I decided to get them out. This was a fairly simple process, I actually didn't film it because it was so late in the night. But I literally dug straight down and took out one massive shovel which contained the entire nest. I put it straight back into the outworld that they came out of and I let them settle for a couple of days, letting the sand dry out. It soon placed back where it should have been, forming a nice level sand, and they've redug their nest. So that was the right move. Next, moving on to our plants. If you remember, we had a privet bush in the back here. I decided to rip that out as well, mainly because it was growing really, really well faster than I had anticipated, but it wasn't going straight out, it was going up, which is kind of expected, but I was hoping it would grow outwards as well. So I've taken it out for now, and I'm happy to replace it once I've managed to grow it out a bit in my growing facilities. I want it to match the back of the tank, so it's giving more space, more climbing abilities. So, for now, I've replaced it with another thornless blackberry bush. I love these because they grow really well and they fruit. Obviously, giving the ants their own source of carbohydrates, making this tank more self-sustaining. Now, I also have a really cool trick for nighttime. I installed these lights behind. They turn on with this quite dim red, it looks bright here, but that's just because it's shining through. It's actually quite a dim red. And at a certain time, my lights turn off, leaving just the red. This is great for viewing the nocturnal activities. Lots of the creatures that I've added only come out at night time. And the red light, being not part of their visual spectrum, is either very very dim or almost invisible to them so they think they're in the dark this is also the case with many ant species we've added quite a few new inhabitants to the tank as well first being five of these amazing bumblebee millipedes. Now, I haven't seen much of them. I think I've seen them twice during the night after this initial time where I put them in. But they are really cool. Just youngins for now. Babies. So they've got a lot of growing to go, although they don't get really big. I chose these specifically because they live on a diet of rotten leaves and pose no threat to anything else living in the tank. The only time they could be a threat is when they could be attacked. They have the defensive capability to spit some kind of acidy goo. That's really not very nice for other insects. Apart from that, we're just going to leave them to it and wait and see if they breathe well in the tank. Next, it's kind of hard to see, but on this log, hiding, hunting, is what I believe to be a wolf spider. 
I caught it locally and brought it home to put it in the tank to join our growing collection of spider inhabitants. These spiders don't spin webs but they live on the ground and hunt aggressively. He has been really enjoying our flightless fruit flies as this is just an easy bounty for him. I got the idea from a fellow ant YouTuber, the Colonialist, to add a few of my mother worms, with the hopes that they will pupate and turn into beetles, and produce live feeders in the tank for my polyrachis dives. They're not that bothered about live Mario worms at the moment, but I'm sure as the colony grows and grows and gets really aggressive, they will. So I've added six Mario worms into my tank around the sandy substrate that is now free of ants. They dug themselves straight in and made themselves at home deep in the substrate and I only really see them again at night time. Hopefully with this we will get a nice colony of darkling beetles. And now heading over to the pond. These are damsel nymphs that we added in. We added in five. They are hunters and they prey on the other things that we've added in that I'll go into next. They're really cool to watch but they don't really like the tide too much. So that's why I broke it up more with the large log creating that nice deep pool behind. These two bags is something I can't pronounce in this one and bloodworm in the other. These both act as amazing feeders for our damselfly nymphs so they were also added to the pond but now we have reached a crossroads with the pond looking back we have this cave that i've made specifically for a crab really a vampire crab as they like to live on land as much as they do in the water meaning we can get away with quite a shallow pond area if we were to do this, we would need to sort out the pump problem and cover it, make sure it's not accessible to a crab to break it. We would also need to add a bit more stock to the pond area to act as live food whilst populations increase. Now this is a large cave as you can see, it starts here and it actually passes these rocks and goes all the way back here meaning there is ample space for the crab, although it does look kind of tight from our perspective. The other things we could do with this is we could tear it up completely. We could dry it out and we could rebuild it as land, potentially solving the problem that we had with the bicolor, as they were just too close to the polyrachis dives. If we moved them further away, they might fare a little better. So, let me know in the comment section what you think. If you think we should tear it up, if you think we should get a crab, or if you had a different suggestion altogether. I want to hear your views. I will listen, and it's what we will act on. Now, on to our colony of polyrachis dives, commonly known on this channel as the Moorfolk. They've been very, very busy, building a second part of their nest behind this log. This is pretty much next to their original nest in the jug but it is really cool because it's against the glass and it has given me some opportunity to have a look within the nest. I always find it really impressive the way they build their nest, weaving over these scaffold structures that they build. If you think in size comparison Humans couldn't do it this fast. A team of humans would probably struggle to build a house as fast as they build their nest. Using their larvae, they 
roam back and forth over the scaffolding, layer after layer of silk is placed, providing sort of a screen for them as they add more and more foliage, sticks and whatever else they can find. Now, expansion in the outworld usually means only one thing, the colony is growing in size. Polygraphist dives are polygamous, which basically means they can accept multiple queens. In this colony, I have three. And they're pumping out babies like nobody's business. Their appetite has also increased almost five times as much as they were eating. And I suspect this to be because they're now in a larger space. So they're more willing to have more members of the colony. This shows that they might have been restricting colony growth in the smaller tank. Population control of some kind, which to me is an amazing trait to see. It would be great if I could see it again and manage to prove this hypothesis. Like I said, with them nesting up against the glass, I have had the opportunity to peek into the nest occasionally. I have now covered this with a layer of cardboard make sure that it's dark and they don't cover it up themselves, giving me opportunities to look in the nest at a later date. The last amazing thing that I'm going to describe on this video today is the Polyrachis Dive's burial rituals. And I mean that with a pinch of salt. They tend to bring any dead ants, pupa, shells, or any kind of rubbish down to the flowing pond and they place it in like a viking burial. I've never witnessed ants do this before but it is very interesting to watch and you can see it's very deliberate maybe it's something to help with the cleanliness of the colony I don't know but I'll keep watching and keep you updated and as always thank you again for tuning in and watching these videos it would mean an awful lot to me if you would subscribe, press that like button, and even give me a little comment. See you again, Ant fans.